Welcome everyone to Los Libertinos podcast. I am your host, Carlos Abelard, and my guest today is Lou Perez. He is a former head writer for We The Internet TV. Currently, Lou is based out of New York, freestyling, uh, doing uh, some uh, sketch comedies, doing stand-up. He does opinion writing, and he is the, the, the host of the Lou Perez comedy show, uh, uh, podcast, sorry. Um, he uh, recently signed a contract to write a new book, which we'll get into. Uh, thank you, Lou, for uh, coming on. Oh, pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. So uh, you know how these go, these things go in the beginning. Everyone does the background, and we're going to have to do that here because uh, some, in, some in my audience might know who you are because they would have seen a lot of your work on, uh, on, uh, on We The Internet and uh, might have heard you on your podcast and seen you out there. And, uh, but uh, many of the people that I'm trying to reach uh, which is like the Latino community might have not. So uh, if you can give a, 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 a quick background of, of kind of uh, where you came from, where you, where, uh, where you kind of grew up, but if you, if you don't mind, if you could start from what was your favorite cartoon and cereal that you fucked with when you were a kid? Wow. My favorite cartoon and cereal. Well, I think on the cereal front, once you said cereal, immediately my mind went to um, the Flintstones, the the Pebbles, Fruity uh, is it Fruity Pebbles? I think I think they were. And th what was great about them is that you know they were they were all these like little sh it was like shavings of sugar basically, right? <laughs> and then when the if you let them in the milk for too long, they would start to just stick together. And then you would th throw it like in your mouth with the with the spoon. And I mean, it was just pure sugar. So so my, my mind immediately goes there. And as far as cartoons, man, what was my book? You know, like when what what cartoon made that that sugar rush go, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that would have been some of your early, you know, influences. Right. I mean, you know, the I guess, you know, I you know, I mean, I kind of remember some of my cartoons, but like, you know, you know, what did you? What did you miss around with in some of that? When you yeah, were I think uh, I think Ren and Stimpy is uh, that that comes to mind for sure. Uh, Doug, you guys remember Doug from Nickelodeon? That that uh, I don't know if Doug was his but his best friend was Blue. He had a blue dude um, as a, as a best friend. But you know, I'm sure if you name the cartoons, you know, I've I've uh, I used to watch them. All yeah, the yeah, I yeah, no, I. Um... Man, you know what? I didn't watch those when I was a kid. I didn't. I, I don't know. Those were might have been cable shows. I might have been a maybe, little. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. There was a time we were. I, I mean, we were definitely, uh, we were definitely stealing cable at some point. <laughs> like, uh, I'm not gonna say who in my family knew guys who could get us an illegal box, but for a while, you know, that that definitely was was the case. What, what were some of the cartoons you were into? Oh uh, man, I guess. I mean, I get. I mean, when I was a kid. I used to like I used to come home fast to watch like Animaniacs. I always thought that that uh -huh. shit was funny, you know, like, I don't know. It seemed a little a little edgy. And so like, uh, I love the I good pigeons. The good pigeons were my were my I like favorite. Ren and Stimpy. I mean, I ran and Stimpy. So Ren, no, the uh, Pinky and the Brain. Was, I mean, I always thought that was uh -huh. kind of funny. And uh, and in the morning, I don't know, like Ninja Turtles and just shit like, you know, shit like that. Just um, yeah, I don't Ninjas know. I mean, I like all kinds of stuff. But yeah, I remember X-Men. I remember watching X-Men. Oh, lot. yeah, dude. X-Men was bad. That's right. And there was there was a there was a show. I don't know if a lot of people remember this, but it was it was called James Bond Junior. Mm -mm. It was James Bond, but as like a as a as a teenager. Um, so I remember, yeah, like, like getting up, and it was. I think some of these were before school started, so I'd be watching them before school started, and then Saturday mornings. Um, I remember digging, uh, you know, digging into into cartoons. But then something happened. At some point. There was a new show on on TV, and I think it was called it, it was the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and I was really excited to watch this thing. And I remember trying like the first episode I watched, I was like, "This is terrible, man! This is awful!" And I feel like that show ruined cartoons for me. Now, it, the show wasn't a cartoon, but it it was you know it was played with cartoons you know like following it and, yeah and, i mean i watched it but i don't remember i was i would have been that critical but you were you, you remember that you thought man this, I was this critical, is critical yeah and i was a kid i was like this is i'm like this is garbage <laughs> this is so over the top and it's the same storyline and something i noticed too is uh 
what you know when, when they when they get into their uh, into their uniforms, right? You can't tell you know who they are, so they would do like voiceover. Uh, and some of the girl characters, like I think the Yellow Ranger in particular, if you stared, if you if you stared long enough, they obviously used a male stuntman because you could see the testicles. You know, so it was like that ruined it for me because she was really she's like a pretty girl. And then but when she's about to fight, she you know, they use like a I don't know, like an Asian dude stunt man. It was fucked up. Oh, man, I never knew that. So now everybody's going to go watch it for me. Man. Everybody's going to go watch uh, Power Rangers and start looking for those huevos out there. Man. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. So um, so then background, what do you got? You know, I mean, how do you how did you start off? I know you're the son of an immigrant and. You know, if you can give a kind of a background to the audience. Yeah, yeah. My my uh, my dad is from Argentina. He's from uh, San Miguel de Tucumán, and uh, he came over back in uh, in the late '70s. So, like, I think 1977. And uh, he's a butcher, so he's a butcher by trade. And um, by the time I think I was maybe like one or two, he uh, took over a butcher shop that a uh, uh, an an older man had been running for years up in Spanish Harlem, uh, uh, El Barrio. And um, uh, he, he and the, the older man eventually became, uh, you know, very, uh, very good friends. So, yeah, I mean, I, basically I grew up with, uh, you know, a, a dad with a butcher shop in Spanish Harlem. And I grew up in, in Queens, New York, um, a big, a pretty big family, I guess. There's five boys. Uh, so I'm one of five boys. And, uh, and yeah, and I, from, from the start, I mean, I, uh, my family, especially coming from, you know, being one of, of five boys, there was always a lot of jokes being made, you know, it was always a lot of trying to make people laugh. And, uh, I was always, I was always that, that kind of kid, you know, uh, I like to describe myself. I was, I was a class clown who did well in school. Right. So I knew when to turn it on and turn it off. And, uh, yeah, even from like early on, people were so, like saying, like my classmates were like, "Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna, you gotta be a comedian uh, eventually." But I, I never, I never really gave it a shot until uh, until I went to college and I tried improv comedy for the first time, and that led to sketch comedy. Then after sketch comedy, I started doing stand up, and you know, from there I've been, I guess, in the game for maybe almost twenty years. It's 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 crazy when I look back. I'm like, damn, man, I. I've been doing this a while. And and when you were and when when the kids told you, um, hey, you're going to be a, a comedian, you didn't think about it. Uh, were you into something else or you just that wasn't even something on your on your plate or or your family would have not even told you like that wouldn't even been something to even think about. Like, oh, you know, you, you could just imagine comedian. Que es eso? You, know, yeah, loco, yeah. you know, like, you know, <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. It's like what, you know, like well, a comedian, like, like, like. Like even the whole idea of a comedian, no, that that's something for, for the people who are already success, who already exist. You know, like George Carlin and Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, um, the cast of In Living Color. Like that, that that's what comedians are. So I never, you know, really thought about it as a, as a as a kid. Um, I played ice hockey, so I think there was a part of me who thought, you know, maybe one day I'd grow up to be a, prof- a professional ice hockey player. That never happened, but um, but yeah, I think. One one of the one of the things growing up is my dad. Uh, my mom was a was a stay at home mom. My dad worked, so he worked uh, Monday through Saturday, and you know even you know after work he would be you know coming home and they'd be doing the bills and stuff, and we'd be helping to count money. You know it was like a uh, everybody everybody chipped in. You know, um, but he told he told me and my brothers like our job was school. Like, that's what your job is. You gotta, you gotta do well at school. Um, which, you know, I, I think was, it made sense, you know, but I think a, a part of me, you know, looking back wishes that I had had a little bit more, uh, responsibility outside of school. Like, you know, uh, had I been when a teenager, I was very, I was very lucky not to have like have to get a job after school. It was always like, no, just take care of your studies and, uh, and all that. But I think, I think I, I think, you know, having a job definitely builds character and gives you something to put on on the resume when you're actually looking for a job. Yeah, yeah there's a, a lot of uh, similarities because uh, it was the same thing. You know, I'm, I'm a son of uh, immigrant parents. And yeah, I also remember, uh, you know, we've always worked construction and 
yeah, sometimes you had to count the cash out to start putting it in the envelopes for the employees and different things like that. And uh, there's probably a lot of similarities between uh, in, in our in, in our lives because, uh, I mean, it, what you're saying is it just rings just like the way that I heard it when I was a kid. You know, our parents, my parents too, just, hey, you don't have to worry about work if you're in school. You know, if you don't want to be in school, then you got to chingarle, you know, so so you choose, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I always pick school until until I didn't, you know. Yeah, yeah. Until I didn't. But um, so that means that uh, I've heard you. So uh, you said uh, Argent, uh, from Argentina then. That would have been in 86. How was your household when when Argentina won the World Cup in 86? I mean, uh, I mean, that would have been like, I mean, do you remember it or what? I would have been four. I would have been four years old. So I I don't I don't remember it. But I think looking back, I I think I'm talking to my dad. I think my I think I remember like my my brother saying that that he he was going nuts. And he's like he's like the only one. He was like the only, you know, Argentino from where we grew up, you know, so so like like him going nuts. But, you know, something happened. I think it was probably. Uh, I think it was two World Cups ago. It's when when Argentina lost to Germany in the uh, in the finals. The, the final, finals yeah. The World Cup. And up until that point, I'd always like made fun of guys who took sports too seriously. You know, I'd always made fun like, oh, come on, man. Like you're wearing the hat. You don't even play on the team. Right. Right. Exactly. Or dudes that got the tattoo. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. You know, what are you, you know, what are you doing? But when Argentina lost. I burst into tears crying. I had my I had my my jersey on and I and I was crying. And it was because I I it it's funny that it took that for me to learn just how important sports can be, especially a national sport like that, because I was associating that team with my father, you know, everything that he had been through, uh, the good, the bad, the struggle, and all that. I was thinking about my dad and I was watching the game in uh in Los Angeles. He was back in New York. And we were going back and forth, you know, texting and, and stuff like that. And uh, so, yeah, that was like, a. <laughs> I, I remember like walking over with my, with my girlfriend who would become my wife and I'm just like, you know, just, just, cr- <laughs> just crying and stuff. And, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, Germany played, played an incredible game for sure. Yeah, no, that's a, that's awesome. I have a, 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 a football is a big part of my, of, of, of my life. Uh, I've, I've, it's been involved. I've been involved since I was a kid and, and it's even a big part of my uh, of my political agenda because uh, sometimes you put markers out there just to kind of uh, you know your principles kind of ride where some markers that you put out. But a marker that I put out is to say that, and I've been saying this for like ten years, and people always look at me, but I always say that uh, Texas is going to win a World Cup before the United States does, and that's to say that when Texas succeeds, we will have a better World Cup than the United States does. And yeah, it just sounds like bullshit, but hey. Don't be surprised, and if and if it ever happens, you know, hey, I was the first one saying that shit, but yeah, yeah. it's a big, it's it's a big part, and and uh, man, that's that that that's actually a nice story that that that, that you say that, you know, because uh, with my parents, it's always been that when it's you know they go for Mexico when it's Mexico, and then when they go for uh, and then when Mexico and USA play, they'll wear these shirts that are like half, you know, half, yeah, the, the the half shirts, and uh, and they've always been respectful of like, oh, we know where we came from. But we know where our, you know, the opportunities, you know, so they're, they're, they've always been very respectful on that. And and the game's always taught me a lot of lessons. So, yeah, I always incorporate. Uh, so that's why I had to ask, you know, because uh, sure, sure. I know I would have, you know, uh, Argentinians are definitely uh, uh, passionate people for the for the game. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Um, so uh, I've heard in previous uh, podcasts that, that you've been on that uh, you went to Catholic school. Yeah. And um and that uh, there was a, uh, I guess, uh, one of the teachers there that kind of saw something in you about your your writing, or that you were either going, or they put you like in a writing class that, yeah, and I, that uh, that might have been a good start, or or maybe it was natural to you to write or to be into that, you know. Yeah, no, well, no, thank thank you, you know, for you know for 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 listening, and then also for remembering that and bringing it up. So um, when I when I was in school, I was very. Uh, I was very outspoken, you know, I wasn't afraid to say what was on my mind, especially in writing. And I had the opportunity to be the editor in chief of our school newspaper It was called the Magnificat. And the person who ran it was my English teacher, brother Jeffrey Pedersen, who was the greatest teacher I've ever had. He had such a profound, profound impact on me. And uh, I think 
I think he definitely saw a lot of potential in me, um, not only for being a, a good student, but but also, I don't know, he took a, he took a liking to me and I took a, a, a liking to him to the point where, you know, I, I would hand him, um, I would hand him notebooks of my poetry because I wrote poetry at the time and he would read it and he would mark it up and he would like give notes and stuff like that. Uh, so that was, so that was really cool. But um, as the editor in chief of the, of the, of the school newspaper, I got to write um, articles. So some of the articles that I wrote were satirical, you know, they were, you know, made up, made up stories. And the, the one that always comes to mind is a, a story called the, the greatest cockfighter to ever live. And it was about a, a chick, a rooster that, you know, was a, was a fight, you know, was a fighter. And it was basically a, uh, you know, the story of the rise and fall of this, you know, cockfighter uh, and uh, him trying to, you know, get back into, you know, into the ring. And I, you know, I took that as an opportunity, you know, as a, as a teenager, I got to write the word cock a bunch of times and have it, you know, go through, you know, not be censored, you know, because it, it, it got through like that. And then I would also write, I guess, more like uh, a traditional, um, uh, more traditional like essays and, and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, if, you know, if I think about it, it's sort of like the, co the comedic writing probably started there in high school. And then later in college is when I was like, oh, you know, I'd like to perform and see what, you know, see what I can do with that. So the, the foundation was the cock story. I think I think so. It's it's one that comes to mind. And one of, one of the things that I absolutely I I'm, I'm so pissed off that I did is when I was um, interviewing uh, to get into colleges. Uh, part of the uh, part of the submission was you know you would submit all your test scores and stuff like that, and you would have interviews with alumni from from these colleges. And and I had I had. Uh, submitted for uh harvard and yale and i remember the i think the, i think it was the harvard guy i gave him like my only copies of the mm -hmm. of these stories i didn't i didn't retain them uh and i'm, and I'm even even back then i'm like oh man why did i do that because i didn't even get in i didn't even get into harvard or yale or you know that uh those kinds of <laughs> those really high high level schools um but i wonder if i went back i wonder if they still have copies of that in, in the uh, the high school library that would be pretty cool they probably do you think i mean i mean they, they probably got to keep records for that because they probably i would think they do yeah, yeah. Just, i mean what do you remember a lot of them or is it just something that you're like hey i just want to have them because it'd be kind of cool to have i think yeah i think yeah i think it, it would be cool that it'd be interesting to read you know i think a part of it would be a little cringy you know to sort of reread stuff that i wrote uh back then um i think i wrote i remember writing something and I think it was, I think the title was Pocket Full of Posers, right? And I was, and I didn't name anybody, you know, I didn't like, I didn't call out anyone, but I remember one kid in particular being pissed off with me because he thought I was talking about him. He thought that I was calling him a poser because, you know, that was a time when people were listening to, you know, punk rock and metal and that sort of thing. And, and when you're young, it's, uh, it went, young you really hold on feeling like you're the only one who listens to this band or you know watches this cartoon or, or something like that uh where you, know, you want to like eliminate others from you know from that from your world um it turns out i wasn't i don't think i was talking about him but it would be interesting to read that and <laughs> it just, sounds like you were dude it sounds like you know, were the more that I think, <laughs> shit the more that i think about it maybe i was talking about him <laughs> Oh man, I feel bad. Uh, but I'm sure we, I'm sure we would get along just fine right now. Uh, that's all right though. But I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, you probably were, but you probably didn't like mean to or something. But it's all right. I mean, uh, right. people influence whatever, like how, how you write about stuff. So, so uh, yeah, you uh, maybe uh, several months ago or uh, a little while ago, you had a a piece uh, that came out that was the you wrote a piece that was a. Uh, basically how you were labeled a, a, a far right radical. Can you kind of get into that a little bit? Because uh, you got a lot of traction on that, on that piece that you did. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I wrote a piece uh, at the end of 2020 um, that it ran in the wall street journal. 
And just to give people like a, you know, a little, a little background in October of 2020, I lost my job. So I was, I was, you know, fired. My position was eliminated. I guess that's the way they, they would put it uh, at We The Internet TV. So I was no longer working there. Um, the, the We The Internet is run by the Moving Picture Institute. So the, the, that's who was employing me. And I was out of a job, you know, and, and out of a job, married with a baby and trying to sell our apartment to move out of this city and, it was, there was a lot, a lot going on. And, you know, I had started the podcast, but it wasn't growing as fast as I would like. I was, you know, really, I was, I was in a state where I, I was, you know, very worried for, you know, for my future, you know. And then I, I had a number of friends share with me a, a tweet from Brett Weinstein. And uh, in the tweet, he was t- in the t- in the tweet or series of tweets, he was talking about this academic st- study that was done, where they were uh, looking into what they called the growth of right wing echo chambers on YouTube. And part of the study is they took, I think it was like almost a thousand YouTube channels, and they categorized them. So you'd have far left, left, center right, far right, you know, and a number of friends shared that with me because when you look over into the far right section, you see we, the internet TV. And at first I was like, oh man, what a, you know, what a joke. Right. But then, I mean, the reality is that I'm, that I'm the face of we, the internet TV, that I'd been the head writer producer and often the lead you know, for, you know, however many years, almost, you know, probably like five years and hundreds of videos where I am inextricably linked to this product, to this brand. And what was, what was funny is that in that same category of far right, you had Brett Weinstein, Sam Harris, Joe Rogan's podcast was in it. And it was like, wait a minute, there are people being labeled far right here who are not far right. My, myself included. Um, so thankfully, because of my, uh, I have a friend, uh, Noam uh, Dwarman, who uh, he's the owner and operator of the, the Comedy Cellar. And uh, I'm often on, on his podcast with uh, our friend Hatem. And uh, it's called the Live from America podcast. He had reached out and, and said, you know, you should do something about this. You should make a video or something. And the more, the more that I thought about it, the, the more pissed off I got, because I was like, yo, I'm in a position where I just lost my job. I don't know what my future looks like. And now if I send out a resume and it says we, the internet TV at the top, because that's where I've done all my work for the past five years, people are going to be like, Oh no, I don't, we don't want to deal with any far right, you know, any far right people. Uh, so uh, fortunately uh, no one was able to put me in touch with someone at the wall street journal. And uh, I wrote up the piece. I didn't, I didn't necessarily, know if it would be accepted and then they decided to run it and that was that was pretty cool it was it was uh it was a hell of a way to close out the crazy year that was 2020 it was it was like you know i was kind of feeling at my lowest when i lost my job and then being published in the wall street journal was like okay there might be stuff happening and um and from that wall street journal article i i actually um it's led to this to this book deal that I have that I'm going to be uh, be writing a book. So visit PalomaVerdeCBD.com for all of your CBD needs. Get 25 percent off everything in their store by using the promo code Renegade. And how and and uh, and and can you get into the details of what it's so? Is it simply you know is it in the same uh, vein of 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 of, of this? Yeah, it's a similar thing, sort of a. You know, my, you know, firsthand account of doing comedy um, in the culture that we have now, the culture of, uh, you know, cancel culture, social justice warriors, the woke stuff. And while a lot of people are often talking about or complaining about censorship and complaining about, oh, you can't make jokes anymore. You can't do this. You can't do that. I'm taking a different approach and I'm, I'm saying I'm, I want to show people that. Uh, really, there's there's like no better time to be doing comedy, and I'm happy to be doing comedy uh, right now. So, you know, I, I haven't, um, I you know, I have like a, a rough outline, 
And part of me is still thinking like, how the fuck am I going to write this thing? Um, but I'm going to be, you know, approaching it from, you know, examining where we are, what it's like to be a, to be a comedian today. And, you know, what are the things that we have to look forward to? Because I think more, you know, more than anything, uh, there's a lot to look forward to. And um, I have quite a few people who've asked me, you know, am I hopeful for the future? And what I say to them is if you're not hopeful, well, you got to create your own hope. You got to make it. Uh, and me, I don't have any choice because I got a, I got a baby and another baby on the way. So it's like, you know, if that's what my whole life is now is just creating some hope and trying to work with the tools that I have to make the future as bright as possible. Shit. That's what I got to do. So the, the landscape of the, of the comedy game right now, is it, is it really walking on eggshells or, or, or can you walk on those eggshells and be careful or you just, or, 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 I mean, how, how are you trying to navigate those waters? Because, um, you know, I, I, I'm a big fan of, of, of comedy. I, of, co of comedy shows. I've been going to them since I was a kid. I don't remember which one was my first one, not a kid, but, oh, you know what? I was a kid. That's right. We used to go to like a, a, a Nuevo Laredo across the border. You know, they have these, uh, uh, they would call it, they were like their yearly festivals. And yeah, I remember as a kid, you know, my parents didn't have no bad habits, so they didn't drink, but you know, we would, they would take us to these little metal tables and you get your like Mexican Cokes and, you would watch these comedians and everybody was laughing. I remember my parents would be like, you know, there were some jokes that were like, I would, I would be like, I know there's something that's like adult in there. No, no, you know, no, no, you know, don't, don't, you know, it's para adultos, it's para adultos. So, you know what? That's right. I forgot that I've been, that I, I used to go as a kid and, and I always just look up and just be like, man, these guys, you know, get to talk jingles and shit. And, <laughs> and, 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 and people are clapping for them. So, so, you know, I've always looked uh, at, at comedians or, 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 or your, y'all's craft as something that is, um, you know, at the forefront of like of culture, because you guys get to push the limit really on the streets of what's of what's said, because the people that go to your shows, then they have the space because they just came from a show and they get to talk shit at the street level of whatever you guys might have just said, you know, so it's the same thing. Like if it was a ball player, hey, they just saw they saw some stuff at a game or something. They think they can go do it and shit, right? And they take it home and think so. So, but, but you know, in in professional sports, you know, and all that, the the game is still the game. The rules are the rules. It's obvious. But in the comedy game, it's 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 very unique because it has to do with feeling. There's a lot of feelings involved and things like that. Sure. So, how how are you trying to navigate these waters? Yeah, well, um, something that that I noticed is you know for for all those years when I was. Um, you know, writing and producing for, for We The Internet TV. Ultimately, I was doing it under a brand, you know, of We The Internet. And a lot of people, when they, you know, when they found out that I was no longer working there, they're like, wait, but I thought that was you. You know, I thought that was you. And, you know, to an extent it was because everything that ended up being released had to go through me, you know? So if it was an idea that, that I originally had uh, or, an idea someone brought to me ultimately from finish to end, I was there th throughout the, the whole, the whole process, but I was working under another brand. I had to answer to people who were, you know, who were above me, you know, and since I haven't been, uh, been working there, I have felt just so much freer in what I'm able to talk about and how I'm able to approach it. And um, you know, it could be, you know, it could be challenging to, you know, make, you know, make some things funny, right? But there's a challenge there. And I think it and I think it's possible. And I and I also think that, you know, friends of mine who are also navigating the space in comedy, whether it's comedian Ryan Long, um, Chrissy Mayer, just those two people in, in particular, um, they are not afraid to take on sensitive subjects, right? They're also incredibly talented, incredibly funny. They're very hardworking as well. And during the, the pandemic where clubs were shut down and, you know, it was like, oh, man, is there ever going to be live comedy? And, you know, these are two people who use their skills and used and, and worked really hard to say, all right, the clubs are shut down. Well, I can still record a podcast. I can. Uh, with Chrissy Mayer, I mean, she was recording how many podcasts a week? 
uh, with Ryan, it was like, all right, well, I could still record, so I could still write, record um, sketches. I can make this happen. And what it, you know, what it shows is that there's definitely an audience out there who wants to laugh and wants to laugh at this stuff. So I feel like a lot of people who, um, you know, couldn't hack it, you know, during this year are kind of fading away. And the people who were, uh, you know, who were willing to put themselves out there to put the work in are rising to the top. And, uh, you know, it's obviously my ongoing hope that, you know, I will, you know, I will continue to rise. I'm not as, I'm not rising as fast as I would like, but, um, but, you know, I hope I continue to rise. So. Yeah, no, if you're still grinding it out, then the, the rise is being built on a, on a foundation, you know? So, right. so yeah, as long as you keep hustling, then, then it, then, uh, then it's all good. So, uh, uh, you, I, I got into you, uh, via YouTube algorithms <laughs> that, that, uh, that had me, uh, listen to, uh, uh, uh listen to you and your malice, uh, 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 interview. And, uh, you know, Malice is a, a character, definitely. And for anybody that doesn't uh, know who Malice is, which might be a lot of the, the, the listeners, is go check him out. Uh, he has he puts out a lot of content. Uh, sometimes it's controversial because, uh, you know, he's an anarchist and he pushes the limits, the limits on some ideas that are conventional and he makes you think. So, uh, you know, if you, if, if you look him up. But, um, you know, uh, how has the, the, the podcasting uh, uh adventure been because uh especially you know nobody would well i was about to say nobody will know but you know before we started you know i'm i fucked up on the intro a couple of times <laughs> you know and i'm new at this game and uh and and um you know it's it, it's still you know you know i'm new but you know you've been in it and i don't know just tell me kind of like how the podcasting adventure has been going on yeah well well um with the podcast it's something that my wife have been telling me to do for years. You know, she had been telling me like, you got to start a podcast. You got to start a podcast. There was a time um, uh, years ago when I, when I had a, a live show podcast with another comedian called unsafe space. And um, he and I had a, a professional falling out. Um, I, I, I didn't handle it well. And he didn't, I guess, handle it well. We actually just, um, I, I reached out to him uh, recently to, to say, Hey man, you know, I wish I had handled it a lot better um, than I did. And he was, he was very gracious and in responding to me and, and I, you know, I wish him uh, the best for anybody who's looking for unsafe space. You'll know who I'm talking about. I don't want to, you know, name him because I don't want to, uh, I don't know if it would be embarrassing for him to hear or something like that. But um, we had a, we had a thing going. And then after that, I was a little jaded. I didn't want to, I didn't feel like kind of putting, uh, I don't, I'm not feeling like I was going to put the work in, but, but I, I've, I'm, I'm so used to doing scripted material and having stuff that when it comes out, it's as polished as can be. Right. And the reality is, you know, like you said, you know, Hey, you messed up on the intro. I do that all the time. Um, with a podcast, you're kind you know, you're kind of going into it with, you know what? this might not be as polished as the stuff that I'm normally used to doing. Right. So, so that was a big thing for me to, to get over. And I released my first podcast on October 8th, 2020, uh, which happens to be the birthday of an ex-girlfriend of mine. It's not the reason why I did it. It's not the reason why I released it that day. It just turned out, I was like, I want to release it on starting this Thursday. And then, you know, just keep, uh, you know, keep going from there. Um, but I, I think I think I've I think I've gotten better at it. Um, the more that I that I do it, it is a one man operation, you know. And um, uh, and also I want you know just to, to let the listeners know, you know, with sponsors like you know Paloma Verde CBD. Thank you very much, Carlos. Um, you know, you are you know helping me, you know, give me the resources where I am able to uh, to do more of this. Um, but you know, I think more than anything, it's kind of like when someone asks, "Well, what's your podcast about?" And ultimately, it's it's kind of like. Well, it's it's my opportunity to talk to people who I really like, people I've been fans of, uh, and you know, share that with the world. So I get to, if I see something that I think is cool, like a cool documentary. There was a documentary called Pigeon Kings that I really loved, and then another one called Red Dog. Um, I'm able to reach out to those people and say, "Hey, would you come on and talk to me about this amazing thing that you made that I think more people should should know about?" So that I I, I think that 
that's really cool to be able to, to do that, to go a little deeper on topics that, uh, that I might touch upon in comedy or in, you know, tweets. Um, and you know, the way, and, and the reality that you can do this and build up a fan base is pretty amazing. And it's one of the reasons why I look forward to, to the future and why I think that we're living in a pretty good time that we are able to do this. Yeah. And, uh, sometimes on your, on your, on your channel, you also put out like, like, uh, like little sketches, right. That you've, you've started, yeah. uh, what is the future on that? And I know that, uh, you know, that requires more of a productive capacity to make all that happen. Uh, and the podcast is still one man show, so it's all on you, but, uh, uh, what is the future on, on, on some of that, on, on that end? Yeah. So, um, uh, my, my goal is when, when, when doing the sketches is um, to put stuff out there that has a, has a high production value, you know, stuff that it's like, whoa, this is, this is professional. And, you know, a lot of thought went into, uh, into making this on the, on the production side. Now, obviously doing that as a one man operation with a limited budget is, is tough. Um, but with that, I've been able to, I believe I have something like at least maybe 13 videos in the can that, uh, that are currently going to be edited and, and released over the course of the year. Um, and then there's a number of series like shorter things that I, uh, that I want to be releasing. Oh, that's awesome, uh, man. That's, yeah, that's so, a lot so, of stuff. Yeah. So the material, the material is there. It's just, it takes a little while because, um, uh, one of the people that I, that I, that I work with, um, he's got another job that he's been, you know, working full time. He's been editing on the side and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, are you able yeah, to tease, yeah. a tease? Are you able to tease a little, a, a couple of, uh, the, of the ideas of the sh of what you got? Yeah. So, so this month I'm going to be releasing a three part series um, about a TDS group therapy. So it's basically all the people who suffered from Trump derangement syndrome are getting together to deal with the fact that he's no longer in the picture. And it's like, what the fuck are they going to do with their lives now? And that one, I, I think it's like a cast of eight, eight or nine. And one of the actors, there's a, there are two characters in it that are twins. So we have one actor who plays both parts. So there's already, you know, kind of like a, a special effect uh, element to it. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, that one, that one, you know, going back to just talking about, you know, feeling a lot freer in my comedy now when we were shooting that, that was the first time in a really long time that I was bursting out laughing while we were shooting it. Like I ruined takes because I was laughing so hard and it was like, Oh man, it felt good to be back, to be back to that place. Yeah, no, I hear you, man. And just like the way you mentioned that, that, you know, we, 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 we uh, you know, my wife and I, you know, we try to support your show. Anybody that's out there listening, I, you know, I'm just going to throw it out there. Cause I'm sure that, if there's any sponsors or anything that would want to sponsor or help you out, I'm sure you'd have, you know, if somebody wants to give you some, some capital to do some of these sketches sure. or put in the time, I'm sure that, uh, you know, you know, you, 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 you get into it and stuff like that. Um, so what about on the podcast side? What, uh, what can you tease that's, uh, that's coming on, 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 on that side? Um, do you, um, uh, like just, uh, you know, you know, I do these, you know, with a little time. So the, so I can, we, we can do the editing and all that. Do you do the same or do you like, is it weekly or, you know, you try to put out something weekly or like it's that way. So people, when they uh, tune in, they, they know kind of what to expect, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, so um, I release, um, I release a new one uh, every week. Um, what I do is I'm on uh, locals.com. If anybody is out there, um, the Lou Perez locals.com, you can come and join uh, the Lou Perez community. If you join up, then you get to listen to podcasts early and watch videos uh, early, uh, new sketches. And also um, there's other content. So as I'm, as I'm writing this book, I'm definitely going to be checking in a lot more with my locals community and, you know, running ideas by them and asking, you know, doing polls and, and that sort of thing. Um, so uh, releases are early on Tuesdays and then it goes out to everywhere on Thursdays. Um, and I like being able to, like there are, uh, I have, uh, two more, two that I've, uh, that I have in the can that I need to edit and that'll be released over the course of the, uh, you know, 
over the next couple of weeks. But then I, I did something too uh, recently where I normally do like a monthly ask me anything it's where I go live and, you know, people can uh, hit me up and, and ask me questions and I kind of, you know, riff on it. And for this one that I did on Monday, I was, I invited on a friend of mine who's also a comedian named Andrew Heaton. And that was fun. And I think I'm going to be doing more of those as well. You know, bringing on another uh, friend of mine, a comedian or, you know, somebody that I, uh, you know, that I know well, and uh, doing those as a, as a duo. Cause I, I there was a, uh, it, it was a lot of fun just having someone to, who I'd been meaning to have on anyway, and also the opportunity to bounce back and uh, to bounce ideas back and forth. with. Yeah, no, I hear you. And, um, you know, now that we're getting kind of close to the end here, I wanted to kind of give you a, an opportunity for sure, because uh, I know that I wouldn't be able to do this without the support of my family, especially my wife. And uh, you had brought up that your uh, wife was the one that pushed you to to kind of like, you know, get into the podcast. And you said you have a kid and congratulations. I think you have one on the way. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's 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 my story, too, man. I I, I got one and I got one on the way. And uh, awesome. yeah, I don't know. I just wanted you to see if you could freestyle a little bit of of, of, of how, um, you know, family life is right now with, um, you know, com- like you said, coming off of covid the 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 idea of of having a, a positive future and and the support that you get from your you know your 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 family and and you know just kind of freestyle on that a little bit sure sure um so it it turns out that over over the course of you know of 2020 and then especially over these last four months i think we have dealt with what is considered like sort of traumatic experiences, uh, you know, so uh, me losing a job, it's pretty traumatic. Having a baby is great, but raising the baby and, and losing sleep, that's could be pretty traumatic. Um, trying to sell an apartment, that could be pretty traumatic and, you know, stressful. Trying to buy a house, is pretty stressful. Now moving into that house, is another thing that's really stressful. Um, uh, soon it will be trying to renovate that house is going to be is going to be pretty stressful, and then having another baby on the way. So it's sort of like we keep piling on more and more and more and more and more and more stuff, and you know add on to that you know just little you know squabbles from you know in inside you know internally with the family and dealing with the outside world. Um, so, you know, uh, it's funny. I think you caught me on a, you know, sort of a, a week when, when things are a little tougher uh, on that front than, than, I, than I wish. But, uh, you know, I, I, no matter what, you know, no matter what's happening, I, I get to look at a um, picture of my son and it's like, all right, there's that, that's what we're, that's what we're working towards. You know, we're, we're, we're working towards something uh, um, super, you know, super important. Um, and I got, and I got to say too, you know, like, you know, being a comedian, uh, you know, it's not, it's not the most, um, solid foundation when it comes to like employment, you know, um, there's a lot of risk involved and, you know, even just, you know, putting stuff out is, is risky, but it, it's who I am and it's who I've been for the past, you know, however many years, you know, going back to high school, if you will. And, uh, you know, I, uh, uh, I can't imagine, you know, doing, you know, doing anything else. I can imagine doing, uh, doing something else, but I can't imagine, you know, not, uh, you know, stirring the pot, if you will. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you, man. Yeah. My, uh, my, uh, my parents, uh, like their life lessons were like, my dad said, Oh, you know, everything that you do is not even for you. It's for your kids. And then my mom always said, like, hey, uh, uh, to sleep is to live, right? Meaning, like, be sure that whatever you do, you, you're able to lay down and put your head, you know, and go to sleep because you know that you, uh, you know, you, you tried your best. You did all that. So, yeah, man, on a po- I mean, uh, yeah, man, uh, thank you for coming on. Uh, can you please plug in uh, uh, all the where people can uh, can uh, get uh, can get in touch with you and follow your stuff? Sure, sure. Um, so on on social media, I'm at the Lou Perez. Uh, you can join me on locals.com, thelouperez.locals.com. Uh, thelouperez.com is uh, my website. 
Um, what else? Where else can you join me? Oh, and uh, listen into the Lou Perez podcast. And if you're into CBD, obviously Paloma Verde is the place to be. And use the promo code Lou to get uh, some uh, discounts there for sure. Thank you, Lou, man. Uh, uh, hopefully we can do this again. And, uh, and, uh, and maybe next time we could uh, get uh, into the politics of it. You know, I think uh, it, it, it's a kind of uh, I'd like to have running conversations with people that I have that I have on because uh, you can't, you know, put everything in one in, in, a, in an hour, you know, but uh, right. if, if it's cool, I'd love to have you back on. Uh, and, uh, and maybe we can get into a little bit of the politics stuff. Definitely. I want to want to learn. I want to hear more about Texas and the and winning the World Cup for sure. There you go. All right, man. Peace. Thank you.